Hi guys, so this November I am going to be looking at data cleaning and you will be joining with me on a four part series. So what exactly is data cleaning? Many a times we have data that is coming in in its rawest form, having a number of issues and we cannot go on to perform any data analytics task on such data and therefore we have to do what is termed as data cleaning or data wrangling where you transform the data from its un raw and untidy form into something that is clean and better able to be consumed by the different formulas and software. So why should you clean the data? Well, like we've seen, data comes in dirty, untidy, different formatting, incomplete, duplicate values, to mention but a few. So your task is to ensure that you remove some of these duplicate values, you impute whatever you need to impute, say filling in missing gaps in the data set, you have to ensure that the different things are in order. So um, there are a number of things that are carried out and we will be learning as we continue. So the data source, where are we going to be getting the data that we're going to use this month? Well, R comes with a number of data sets embedded in the many packages that it has. So right from base R to deploy R, string R, which we are going to use for this particular video, come with a number of data sets and these data sets help us to process um, they can help us to learn a number of these things so for this particular video i chose to use deploy hours storms data set so let's begin so we are going to start by bringing in the deploy R package. Then we check for the data sets that are contained within the package. We are interested in using the Storms data set. Next, we load the data set. We save the data as tall. Let's get the information or find out what the data set values mean. So it opens up in this window. Here you're seeing the stones and the description. Next, we have data validation. Let's first have a look at the first few values of the table. So here we go. We are having a table containing six columns. No, these are six observations and 13 variables. Next, let's load these three packages which we are going to use. The first 
thing we're going to do is to check for missing values. So it appears that we have some missing values. So let's find out if there are any NA values using is.na, then we shall have to get a total of the NA values using the call sums function. So as we can see from the output, we are having missing values appearing in category column, the variable tropical storm force diameter, and hurricane force diameter. So next thing is to handle the missing values. Here we have like three options that uh, you can use to handle the missing values. The first is to drop the missing values. And the action you take here depends mostly on the objective you want to accomplish. Every analytic task will vary and there are times that certain information is not useful to you, so you decide to drop it. So for this case, we are dropping all the NA values in the hurricane force diameter. So We use the is.na to call out all NA values, and then we use this symbol here, which means not NA. More, what we are basically doing is we are filtering so that we have only those values that are complete remaining in the data set. And then we store it back into the hurricane force diameter. So let's run this. Next, you have to check and confirm whether the NA values have actually been removed. So as you can see, we don't have any NA values. Okay. So the second option is to impute the NA values. And to do this, you can use median, mean, or mod, depending on a number of factors. One of them is the kind of distribution your data set has. Most time, if your data is skewed in any way, you would prefer to use median. Otherwise, if it is normally distributed from numeric variables, that is, you will be using the mean of it. And then for categorical variables, usually you would replace the missing values with the mod. So in this case, I've chosen to use median. to use median. So first of all, I calculate the median value. And to calculate the median, you use the median function median here. You pass in the variable of interest, and then you use the argument na.remove equals true. Why we are saying equals true is because we want it to ignore the NA values during the computation. So if we run this, we are supposed to get a median value, which is 110. So next we replace the NA values. The function I used here comes from the deploy R package, replace underscore NA. Then you pass it into a list, the list function, which takes the variable of interest, giving it the new value, which is 110. So when we run this,
and then we check again now for the presence of any values we use that any dot i mean any n a passing in the variable of interest so when we run that we see that there are no more missing values next for the categorical variable and in this case it's also named category so first i converted it to as dot factor after which i had to replace the na values i've chosen to replace it with zero so i used a mutate function passing in category and using the if else function so the if else function takes in a condition this is the condition so we are telling it that if you do find an a values in this column category then replace it with a zero otherwise let it be category so we run this hold on mm, looks like i didn't looks like i didn't run the as dot factor so we have this let's just run that and then we run this yeah now it's okay so if i run now this to check for the na values there should be no na values great there's nothing appearing there lastly for this session we are converting the text the text um, case so if we look at the values, let's see. Use the view and pass in store our data set. So name is in a sentence case. Status is in lower case. And then hurricane force is in uppercase. So what I was interested in here is to see that there is sort of harmony in the way these values are captured. So I decided to transform them into sentence case using the string str underscore two underscore sentence which comes from the string r package passing it the variable of interest status and hurricane force diameter respectively to convert them to sentence case so if we run this run this and then we view our data set again see that now name status and hurricane force diameter are all appearing in sentence case so that's it for this session i hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something that can be of help to you thank you so much guys for staying with me till the end of this video I hope you've enjoyed the whole learning process. I have enjoyed it. So please go ahead and practice what you've learned today. It's really not until you've done it yourself and you've seen the different barriers that you may come across that some of these things get stuck or ingrained in you. So lots and lots of practice. 
if you've enjoyed what you've had today, go ahead and like that, uh, like, subscribe, comment where you feel there's something you want to say. And yeah, see you next Tuesday for the next episode. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.